Okay, so we've got a situation here. We have a set point of five degrees and we are at 34 degrees. So we gotta figure out what's wrong here. So this particular condensing unit has two evaporators piped into it. First thing we gotta do is check airflow. We've gone up there on a lift, all three fans are running and all three fans are running. There is a bit of a vibration coming from that one that we can look into later, but that's not the issue that I'm worried about right now. We have to get this room cooled down back to where it was set to. So here's the old Keep Right condensing unit that doesn't appear to be running. So we're gonna have to dig into this a bit and see if we can find out what's going on. So at a closer glance, the condenser fan is running. This thing is in rough shape. I mean, the corrosion around the compressor, the corrosion around the suction line accumulator. Uh, we can see some liquid refrigerant there in the sight glass. So we gotta figure out what's going on here. The contactor's not pulled in, and there is a dual pressure control right here. So we could have a gas situation or a refrigerant situation here where the pressure's too low and it won't start because we're open, but I'm just speculating right now at a glance. We gotta dig deeper into this and find out what's going on now, exactly. we have proper power present. It's a 208 unit across all three phases. We have proper power. The other thing we have is proper control voltage, which is important to check too. There's a transformer that provides a control voltage and we have 22 volts there. A little bit low, but we still have it. So this pressure control here is open. Across that, if it was closed, we would have zero volts, but we have 200 volts across it, which tells me this pressure control is open. So the next step is to stick the probes on here and verify what the pressure is of this machine. So I would imagine it's not a high pressure issue because we are at about 375 cutout and then the cutout for the low pressure side is the high event minus the differential. So we're at about 50 minus about 35. So that would give us about a 15 PSI cutout on this. So let's get the probes on. I would suspect that we have a low pressure situation here, but the probes will tell us that for sure in a second. So what I'm gonna do here is raise up this differential using my refrigeration service wrench, and that should lower the cutout point to a lower number. So this should close. Now the power's off, and once I hear it click, or, or once I get it to a certain point, I'll put the meter across the terminals and make sure it's closed. So I've adjusted that. So basically our cutoff now would be about 10, roughly 10 PSI, and it's well above that. And we are showing that we're closed. We're getting a, an audible buzz there on the meter. Okay, but before I turn it back on and test it, I'm gonna check this contactor to make sure it's not pitted. We don't have any issues with the contactor. The contactor actually looks like it's in credible shape, like it's been replaced. And it's hard to say, but it looks really, really good. So I'm not worried about the contactor One whatsoever. thing I gotta bring up here, earlier when I was checking, that solenoid valve wasn't energized and it makes sense as to why we were having low pressure right here because that hadn't opened up yet and hadn't flown through the system back up here to raise the pressure to close this. So I think we got two problems here. I think that the, the problem with this not being sort of calibrated because it's a mechanical device and not seeing the pressure, there's probably a, uh, a tolerance plus or minus there that we're not factoring in. But the, the main reason is because this solenoid valve wasn't energized and it wasn't opened up. So we're gonna figure out why this was not energized, why it wasn't opening up, check that out. And I think once we do that, we're gonna get this thing running. So upon further inspection, we do not have 24 volts at the solenoid. That's our problem here to get this thing going. So we gotta go down to the stat and make sure it's actually closing. Now, to me, it looks like something happened to this thermostat. This conduit's broken. It's all wobbly off the wall. And this plastic piece is cracked. So I'm wondering if this thing got hit with something. I don't see any damage to the actual thermostat, but I do see some scrape marks, like somebody hit this. 
So potentially we have some, some issues with this thermostat that's not energizing that solenoid, not allowing the pressures to move through the system, close that low pressure switch and start it. So let's open this up and see what's in there. Now the thermostat, obviously it has power because it's lit up, but I just want to double check that. And yes, we do have it. So if we go onto the common side here and we check to the common of our power source, we have 22 volts coming in. Now, if we go to the normally open side, which should be closed right now, and we go to common again, we have nothing there. We have no signal back up. And then if we go across this, or across it, we have 22 volts. That is an open contact, and according to the thermostat and the light being on, that should be closed. We got a faulty thermostat here, possibly because somebody damaged it, as we've seen earlier in the video, with the broken conduit and the scrape marks and it being all loose from the wall here. So what I'll do is I'll jump this out and then we'll go to the roof and run the thing to make sure the machine actually functions before we go ahead and replace that thermostat. Okay, with that thermostat jumped out, this machine is now running. Got some good heat rejection coming off that condenser, 100%, that's for sure. I can feel it. Now, I gotta find out why this condenser fan was running without that contactor being pulled in. I have a feeling that it's wired on the line side instead of the load side. We're gonna rectify that and we're gonna just make sure that this machine is running properly as best as we can. And then we're gonna replace that thermostat and make sure it comes down to temperature. But besides that, guys, that's pretty much it. That's, that's why that machine was down. Solenoid was not energized, leaving the pressure switch open because the thermostat was not closing its contacts on a call. That's pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. Happy HVACing.